This is what a tsunami looks like underwater. Behind me is an action shot from the Indian Ocean tsunami that occurred in 2004. And in the footage that I'm about to show you, scuba divers were caught in the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. Take a look. The divers said that this experience was extremely surreal, the fish started acting very oddly, and then this massive wall of dust came upon them. Visibility dropped, and then after this, it was like they were stuck in a washing machine. Fortunately, all of the divers that were in the video survived, however, unfortunately, a lot of people on the land were not so lucky. So there's been an uptick in siren head sightings recently. Things are about to get bad. So this past week, just outside of Birmingham, Alabama, two girls were walking through the woods when they heard what sounded like an emergency siren. They were terrified and started running, but then they heard what they told police sounded like their names coming through a speaker system. Now from other siren head sightings in the past, we know that he uses the siren to lure people out of their homes. And that by the time you hear your name, it's too late. The girls made it out of the woods, but not before one turned around to snap this photo. Siren Head hasn't been seen in over 20 years, but it looks like he may be back. What's worse is that other teens in the area have complained about hearing their names being read through a speaker in the middle of the night, waking them up. And what we know from experience is by the time one person sees him, he is deep inside the community. This photo is of the Cincinnati Crawler. It was taken by a family who caught him in their home in 1974, but he escaped shortly afterwards. So in 1974, the Johnson family in Cincinnati noticed a couple weird things happening in their home. The 14-year-old daughter, Claire, would complain about seeing glowing eyes outside of her window at night. And then one night, the youngest son, Timmy, was laying in bed in the dark when he felt the family dog jump up onto his bed. But when he went to go pet it, it was not the dog. It was the crawler, who police still believe was responsible for the disappearance of four other boys in the area. Some believe that he was an escaped convict, while others actually believe that he was the victim of human experiments happening in the area that may have been conducted by the family's dad. Claire snapped this photo of him before he escaped, but he was never found since. I want to hear your paranormal experience that made you think, oh my gosh, this is for real. When I was 10 years old, I fell asleep downstairs by myself, and I was asleep on this little couch right here. I had been having some really weird dreams, and I don't remember what they were about. I just knew that they were weird, and in my dream, I remember someone saying, we've been watching you for three months, which, strangely enough, was the amount of time that the dreams had been happening. So I fully woke up, and my cat was sitting on my lap, and I just started petting her, and then I realized she was looking at something behind me and her eyes got really wide and she jumped off my lap and ran out of the room so i thought oh that was weird and then i hear something behind me so there's this part in our house that always creaks but not many people know about it so i heard it step on this this spot right here always creaks so i turned around to look at the sound looked up and it was a huge black outline of a person has been in my freezer for 37 years and I was always told it was like a wedding cake top. Adam Smith had been living in this apartment, taking care of his mother who passed away from cancer just days ago. He showed us a photograph of a wrap box that was in his freezer. He said his mother kept it inside their freezer for decades and told him to stay away from it. He opened it after she passed away. There was a pink blanket, baby blanket. And when I, I reached down and touched it and I could feel a foot and I could see the baby's head with hair hair was still attached to it he's distraught thinking about the possibility that that child may have been his sister and what his mother may have done preliminary testing led investigators to believe the child was wearing clothes made in the mid to late 1960s and that he was younger than one year old when he died the baby was never legally named police say What is a creepy, unexplained childhood experience that you had? When I was a kid, my family and I lived in a house in Texas. It was a two-story house and my parents were putting my little sister to sleep in her crib. 
Then they went on downstairs and I continued to play with my toys at the top of the staircase. For some random reason, I decided to look at the bottom of the staircase and I saw my sister crawling around on the ground. So I thought to myself, huh, I wonder how she got down there. Then I remembered. My parents had just put her in the crib about five minutes ago. So while I stare at her, I realize that she's a little pale and she has huge black eyes, but otherwise she looks just like my sister. So naturally, I start screaming and my parents come running. I'm hysterical and my parents are asking me what's wrong. I point and I say, look, there's Sneha. She's at the bottom of the staircase. She was gone. Around my 18th birthday, my family and I took a trip to India. We were visiting my grandma and one night she decided to oil and braid my hair and my sister's hair. So as my grandma was braiding my sister's hair, she looked over at my mom. And she said, huh, Ritu, Sneha's twin would have been a girl. I look at my mom and I say, what twin? And my mom looks at me and says, Swasti, I never told you this, but I miscarried Sneha's twin. This happened around five years ago at my parents' house. So I had just gotten home from the gym and I had my headphones on. As soon as you walk into my house, you see this staircase here. I saw my sister's legs sneaking around this corner of the staircase and I rolled my eyes because I was like, what is she sneaking around for? This is our house. So I went to the kitchen to wash my water bottle. I looked up through the kitchen window that looks into our family room here and I saw my sister sitting on the couch with her headphones on. She was just kind of looking at her laptop. There was no way she could have come down without me seeing her. This is where I was and this is the only other way to get through to that other room without coming directly through the kitchen, but I'm still gonna see you walk by the kitchen. So I came into this room and I asked my sister whether she had gone upstairs two minutes ago. She took off her headphones and said, no, I've been sitting down here for the past hour watching The Office. I freaked out because I know I saw someone go up that staircase. So I went upstairs, but I couldn't find anyone. I called the cops, they searched the entire house and they couldn't find anyone either. To this day, I have no idea who it was, but those legs looked a lot like my sister's. So I can only assume that it was the ghost of my sister's dead twin. Show me something in your house that scares people. I'll go first. Do you notice something kind of off about this mannequin? For anyone who's familiar with the legend, she is known as La Pascualita. The mannequin has stood in the window of a Mexican bridal shop for more than 90 years, but when she was first placed there, patrons noticed something kind of strange. The detail work on this mannequin was unusual. She was noted with eyebrow hair, veins, and even discoloration around her mouth and ears. But that suspicion soon grew to horror as patrons started to notice that she bore a striking resemblance to the owner's deceased daughter, Pascuela. Pascuela was actually actually set to be married herself, but ended up dying in a tragedy before her wedding day. Shortly after her death, the mannequin appeared in the window and the legend was born that these were the preserved remains of the owner's daughter. But the most compelling evidence has always been the hands. The hands are shown with wrinkles, they have veins, they even have lifelike fingernails, which is unlike any mannequin I have ever seen. The question remains to this day, could this really be the shop owner's daughter? Angry Cougar follows man for nearly six minutes. So this hiker actually did the right thing and saved his own life. With ambush hunters like wild cats, you never want to turn away from them because then you might activate their predator response and then they'll just hit you from the... They'll attack from behind. You also never want to run because then you'll just trigger them into chasing you. And at up to 45 miles per hour, you're not going to get very far. It's like hitting snooze on death. Also, you never want to crouch down and be in a position lower than the cougar. Mountain lions don't recognize humans standing on two feet as prey, but if you squat or bend down pause, the walking flex could confuse you for a four-legged prey animal, and if it does, it's credits. In general, you never want to crouch down in mountain lion country, even if you don't think there's one around. Because just because you don't see him, doesn't mean he don't see you. So to not get turned into a story on CNN, you want to stand tall and speak in a loud, firm voice. It really doesn't matter what you say, cougars don't understand English, but they do understand volume, and if you speak loud enough, you can actually intimidate them. And like the man in the video, you're going to want to do this while backing away slowly. 
you don't want to turn your back and you don't want to go too fast because if you trip and fall and get turned into a hashtag you're gonna feel really stupid in the afterlife also cougars are actually afraid of people and normally won't attack you unless they feel cornered in fact the cougar in this video doesn't want to attack the hiker and if i had to guess the hiker accidentally got too close to the cougar's cubs cougars will hide their cubs in brush and bushes so it's basically the mother's way of escorting you out and if a cougar does charge 90 percent of the time it's just a bluff to intimidate you 10 percent say goodbye but you can respond by throwing rocks and sticks not at the cougar but at the ground in front of it as a warning shot that's how you survive a cougar or at least the cat if a cougar presses you here i got no tips for you but she might Does a photo like this make you feel uncomfortable? Or something like this? This phenomenon is known as the Uncanny Valley. Introduced by Masahiro Mori in the 1970s, the Uncanny Valley refers to a phenomenon where our brains can register that something is very close to human, but we're also aware that something's not quite right. It's the in-between, where we can process that something looks like a person, but it's not a person, and it causes feelings of distress. Believed to be an evolutionary mechanism, which is also not exclusive to just humans, the Uncanny Valley is where we perceive these things to be a threat or not of us and it can cause feelings of panic. One of the most well-known modern examples of this was actually an early test screening of Shrek in 2000 where Fiona was rendered as very hyper realistic. So realistic that it surpassed the threshold of comfort in cartoon and moved into the uncanny valley. The children actually became so panicked at this screening they were reported to be crying at the movie anytime she came on the screen. The entire film had to be halted and she was re-rendered. I'm not sure if this was the actual earliest version of Fiona that made it to the screening, but to put this in context, the one that made it to worldwide theaters is right above. But I did happen to find this monster from some of the early test footage of Shrek. The Uncanny Valley is still a widely unstudied phenomenon, but it continues to become more and more pervasive in entertainment as well as our modern animation. Submarine video watch before they delete it. Steve Angle, huh? <laughs> Internal lockdown. 911 has been called. 
remain in internal lockdown until instructed otherwise by a uniform officer. Okay, you guys, I need everybody right away, back corner and down. Get as close to the wall as you can, crowd it together. Marcus, get this way. Get this way. Get away from the window. Davis, get, hurry up. Get away from the window. We're going to help with these desks. Hurry up. Guys, grab these desks. This is why you never paddleboard out in the ocean. And there you have it, reason 4,269, I'd ride cross country on a bike with no seat, pause, before I'd go out into the open ocean. That is a nope of the highest order. Those are South American sea nettles. A species of jellyfish that can have a bell, you know, that umbrella looking part, more than three feet across. To go with tentacles that can range anywhere from three to ten feet long. And I don't think I even really need to tell you, but yeah, touching one of those can be really bad for your health. They use venom to paralyze prey, but it can also cause excruciating pain and a really bad rash if you get stung. And if you think that's bad, I got something even worse. This is what a jellyfish pool party in Peru looks like. Like the devil's bubble bath. And guess what? This kind of thing? It's only gonna get worse. Because whether you want to believe in climate change or not, the more the Earth's thermostat gets turned up, the more the jellyfish start turning up on us. Since unlike most of the effery in the ocean, jellyfish actually do better in warmer waters with less oxygen. Especially since climate change means more CO2, more CO2 means more algae blooms, and guess what likes to eat algae? And you don't have to be in the water to get rocked by jellyfish. There have been times where jellyfish swarms got so bad, they dead for a cause power outages because they managed to clog the pipes of power plants. Now go ahead and add the fact that some jellyfish can spawn 45,000 eggs a day, especially if we're actively murking the things that eat them. Just another reason to save the turtles. Last night something bad was happening at the Cecil Hotel. Whoa. This is absolutely insane. People are packing up. You can see them in the windows, like trying to leave. That was scary. Is that fire truck again? Oh, and here come cops now. I went upstairs to check the water tanks. No, what happened? Somebody jumped? Oh, no. Remember when all hell broke loose at the Cecil Hotel again, and we thought somebody jumped? Somebody jumped? Well, I asked my friend who lives there, with her baby, by the way, if she knew anything, and this is what she said. Then I was sent this by another friend of mine who lives there. And I did read some comments saying that it was that girl who was found hanging off her balcony, but that was actually a completely different day. I did a bit more digging. All those things did happen, but the only reason why the firemen were there was to put out a battery that exploded in the building. But my question is, how could there be two deaths and one person in a coma all in the course of like a week? No one hears anything about it and the business is still up and running. This is some American Horror Story shit. People are convinced that this guy encountered a skinwalker. Take a listen. Yo, what the f So skinwalkers can mimic the sounds of humans. Was this a trap to lure him in? They also have been known to mimic the sound of their last victim. So maybe this is exactly what this woman was saying when the skinwalker got to her. Like and follow for more creepy stuff. 
One of the most shocking murders of 2022 is by a doctor, Rinaldo Ortiz, an anesthesiologist out of Dallas. This is surveillance footage of him tampering with IV bags outside of the operating room, into which he allegedly injected poisonous medications. One of his colleagues, who used one of these bags to rehydrate herself, suffered cardiac arrest and died. It was noticed that after he was depositing these bags, otherwise healthy patients would have cardiac complications that were unexpected. This led to cardiac emergencies in 11 patients and a death of a colleague. Woman woke up from a 27 minute coma, then she wrote a spine chilling message. The woman fell into a coma and nobody thought she was gonna make it. But 27 minutes later, the woman miraculously woke up. She then asked for a pen and paper and wrote the most spine chilling message. The woman wrote, it's real. Creepy story time. So this story was told by my grandfather. He passed away not too long ago. So he went to a party and he saw this beautiful woman. So lima del danse. While they're dancing, he's like, you want to go to my place? She said yes. So they left and they spent the night together. You know what I mean? And the next day, he woke up on top of a tomb in a cemetery. So my guess is the girl was a ghost or he was on something strong. So I don't know if you're going to see what I'm seeing, but <laughs> this is on repeat. This happens over and over. And then the knocking happened. The knocking. There it is. And it just goes and goes until you talk stop. Can you stop, please? It's just right there. That's new. Okay. Whatever you are, you gotta go. And that's... Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. This photo was taken at a boxing event a couple of years ago by the mother of my friend who's fighting and she posted a couple of pictures of the night on Facebook to which everyone kept asking who the girl is in the ring. I was at the event and never recall seeing her and neither could anyone else. So we looked into this a bit more and we found out that years before the venue used to be a children's home and got burnt down. And my mate seems to think that they look like burn marks on her arm. What do y'all think? Everyone thought yes. Oh no, that's not right. That's not right. Oh. This is a terrifying ghost story. You knew her, hi. I usually talk about some pretty scary stuff and recently I opened an email where everyone can send their personal ghost stories in and let me tell you. Not only have I been getting a lot of ghost stories that I have wholeheartedly loved reading from every corner of the world, these are actually terrifying. And this is one of them. This story comes from someone who would like to remain anonymous and for obvious reasons, I'm gonna respect that. This person starts off their email by telling me that during their sophomore year of high school, the school that she went to did this like religious retreat for a week. And it's particularly important to understand the layout of the building that they were staying in. And the way that this building looks in my head from the description is right when you walk in the main doors, there is a flight of stairs that leads obviously to the second floor, which has on the left side, the women's quarters and on the right side, the men's quarters. These are both long hallways on each end of the building. And at the end of each hallway are bathrooms and along the sides of the hallway are the rooms. But a lot of people actually were complaining that this place felt really weird and a lot of people were really uneasy. And what's funny is her and her friends were actually joking that the building was haunted. And we're going to talk about four incidents that happened during the duration of the week that they were staying there. This first incident happened when her and her friend both needed to shower. They were walking towards the locker room situation and... Everyone else is outside playing volleyball. They get to the door for the bathroom and it is locked. 
they're trying to open the door because it should not be locked because they are the only two in the building. They get so frustrated, they go downstairs, get a teacher, bring her back upstairs, and the door is open. And at this point, the teacher is like, why are you guys pranking me? And they insisted that they weren't. And they were so sure that it was locked that one of them went into the bathroom and locked the door while the other tried to get into the bathroom and the door wouldn't lock from the inside. The second incident happened to her English teacher. Now, I'm not really sure how the school is split up, but they were essentially doing study hall, but it wasn't her teacher's session, so she was in her room. So this teacher wasn't in charge of the session, so she went up to her room and decided to lay down. This is where it gets weird. The teacher wakes up suddenly because she's hearing something coming from her closet and it is her hangers swinging back and forth. No wind, no way for wind to get into the closet. And her part two experience is the following night or sometime during the week, she woke up to the sound of someone walking in the hallway at night, woke up and there were a pair of feet outside of her door and she could see under the door, gets up, open the door, no one is there. And the third and fourth incident happened in the same night. And the author of this email says that this is what made her believe that there was not just one spirit haunting this place. So like every night, they would do nightly study sessions. And after their study hall, they're all hanging out outside of this classroom. Teachers, students, whatever. And they had a whiteboard that sat outside. So the girls decide to huddle next to this whiteboard and take a photo outside and what these girls see in the photo i have goosebumps you can't see but i do they see in this photo this man holding on to the side of the whiteboard and peeking around and the way that it looks in my head is like he's barely peeking out so they got scared and deleted the photo they all went to bed but this girl who sent me this story and her four friends decided to stay up and tell scary stories in this building and this is where she specifically states that this building was kind of like a dorm layout where there's only two beds in per room and they were in her room telling these stories. So all of her friends grabbed the pillows that they had in their rooms and brought them in and they put the two beds together so they could all like sit on the bed. And two of her friends had a room right next to the shower and the toilets and as they were getting their stuff, they hear these girls start to scream. So everyone floods down to the halls and they're asking these girls like what is going on and these girls start to say that they saw a woman the hair on my neck is standing up they saw a woman walking in front of the doorway smiling at them and the girl who sent me this story says that her and her other friend that were waiting for those two to come back thought it was a joke and they started laughing when all of a sudden, another girl, who is not a part of the group, shouts, what the F is that? And points to the other side of the hallway. And as soon as she says that, the lights go out. So the author of the story didn't see what that girl was pointing out. However, she did see the lights flickering and then go out right after she said, what is that? So she knows that it was real. And when this girl was interrogated about what she saw, she said she saw a woman on the other side of the hallway peeking around the corner, smiling. And the girl who told them what she saw did not see the man that was behind the whiteboard. And that is when her and her friends started to freak out. So her and her friends grab flashlights and they go investigate this room where this woman was seen. They walk in and it's just this poor girl still asleep. She has no idea what's going on. And that woman was standing in a room. Not just how this girl ends her story. She doesn't tell me how she left. She doesn't tell me anything else. All she says at the end of her email is that she has to go back to this camp in three weeks because they do, they do another retreat. And that she's going to bring holy water and other religious things to keep her safe. Me personally, I am begging my mom to call me out of school because I am not going to haunted religious camp for a week. No. Secondly, I have experience with the first thing that this person told me with the door being locked and then she brought someone and then it wasn't locked. I've had that happen in my house. So I understand how 
weird that one is. But anyways, that's going to do it for me. Stay tuned for my ghost stories. Did you know Frozen Ground is based on a true story? Well, if you didn't, Frozen Ground is the chilling cinematic portrayal of Alaska's most notorious serial killer, Robert Hansen, the butcher baker. Robert Hansen appeared to be a quiet, unassuming family man. He owned a bakery in Anchorage, Alaska, and was well-liked within the community. However, beneath that facade lied a murderer and rapist. Over a decade in the 70s and 80s, Hansen abducted, raped, and murdered at least 17 women. The most bone-chilling aspect of his crimes was the method in which he did so. He would abduct these women, release them into the remote Alaskan wilderness, and hunt them like prey, sometimes lasting for days on end. The movie Frozen Ground highlights the harrowing escape of one young woman who manages to escape from Hansen's clutches. But despite providing crucial details that could identify Hansen, she's dismissed. After all, Hansen was a likable baker in the community. Eventually, the Alaska State Troopers and the FBI pieced together a profile that unmistakably pointed to Hansen. And when confronted with overwhelming evidence, he confesses to the murder of at least 17 women, including the still unidentified Akluton Annie. Hansen was sentenced to 461 years in prison without the possibility of parole, and he died in 2014 of natural causes.